Hey everybody, how we doing? Welcome to the Mash and Drum Whiskey Room on this Whiskey Wednesday night. Uh, thanks for coming in, guys. Glad to be here on another uh, Whiskey Wednesday. Uh, thanks for hanging out. If you're already in the chat, I've already been chatting with a bunch of you uh, tonight. Thanks for coming in. Have a really cool show planned. Um, Going to be tasting a lot of different stuff tonight. I have a bunch of samples that um, that I've received um, over the last couple weeks. I've had um, uh, a couple of really great ones which we're going to try it's kind of the highlight tonight but it's going to be the king of kentucky um i got two samples from i want to thank dh Silve, uh dustin he's usually in the chat um he brought me two samples of the brand new 2019 king of kentucky uh both of them are from different uh barrels so we're going to kind of compare them tonight um see if it's really worth the 250 bucks uh we'll see how that goes i also have a big announcement uh tonight coming up we'll wait a little bit towards the end we're also going to be giving away um are two samples of the wild turkey cornerstone uh that i promised i said on the video i'm going to do one sample but i got over 112 i got about 112 entries uh before tonight so i'm gonna give away two so it should be a, a fun stream tonight guys um let's start with saying everyone um uh saying hi to everyone in the chat first like i always do because i love you guys um so first up trevor wilson steve a how you doing, guys? ADHD Fishing. How you doing, buddy? Tab A Key is in the house. Rebecca Page. I know she was on her lunch break. Thanks for coming in. Brandon Elliott, who was a first timer uh, for the uh, for the stream tonight, guys. So everyone say hello to Brandon Elliott. Thanks for coming in. Um, let's see. Dark Meat Chicken. Brian Walsh. Todd Sexton's in the house. Nick Foles. Matt from Whiskey Crusaders. Michael Hassett. How you doing, guys? Karen B. Ford, my friend in Nashville. How are you? Um, Sharper4221 is here. Eric Waite. How you doing, buddy? Uh, let's see. My Bourbon Journey, Scotty Too Hotty. How you doing, buddy? Stellar Matrix is, Stellar Matrix is here. Dusty Dan's Whiskey Reviews. Richie Z. John We Whiskey Sipper Watson is in the house. Always try to catch that and say that right, buddy. <laughs> uh, Brandon Weiss is here. How you doing? Um, let's see. Well, it's the Oak and Smoke Whiskey Reviews. How you doing, Brent and friends? Curry Bowling's in the house. Andrew Spurl. Jeffrey Wack is here. Michael Montet. Keith Daniel. Donner Pass Whiskey is here. Everybody coming in. More and more of you. Uh, How Do You Whiskey is here. All right. I'm going to scroll all the way down. We have Carl Ivey. DJ Beacon is here. We already have 61 people in the chat. Um, welcome, everybody. Thanks for coming in. Uh, before we get the show started tonight, I want to start off with uh, something new. Um, and I don't know if he's in the chat yet. If he did, uh, if I did miss him, I don't know if he's there yet. But uh, Joseph Brazo um, was kind enough to send me a bottle of Woodenville. So this is Woodenville straight bourbon whiskey, uh, 90 proof. Uh, I did a little research on this. I've had this bottle for a little while. Just been I haven't been able to get to it just yet. Um, but Woodenville has actually has a really cool story. It's um, all right. What's up, Santa Cruz? And how you doing, man? Doug Kristoff is here too. Um, Whiskey Mick is here. Wow, I got a lot of new people in the chat. Uh, Buddhas829 is here. Todd Korzynski. Moe's Chun. Alan from Whiskey Friend. Man, awesome chat, guys. So um, we're going to be trying this Woodenville first. I want to pour this one out tonight just to kind of get the palate warmed up. I want to give kind of a first impression review of this one. I've heard really amazing things about Woodenville. Um, this is out of Washington State. Um, these guys cultivate uh, their own grains. They um, mash on site, age on site. Uh, their barrels are toasted and then heavily charred. Uh, it's supposed to be a good amount of flavor in here. So let's get a uh, first impression on the Woodenville. And let me know in the chat what you guys are starting out tonight with me. And a good pour there. All right. Uh, Graham Young is in the house, Chris Sprague, uh, everyone's still coming in, awesome. All right, so I'm starting off tonight with Woodenville. Like I said, let me know what you guys are starting off with tonight as we sip along here. And um, uh, Whiskey Crusader says it just got here, I really like it. All right, cool. Oh, all right, let's get on the nose here see what we get. Now, obviously, this just uh, just poured, so I'm going to let this open up a little bit, but I want to get some first impressions on the nose, guys. Let's just jump right in tonight. I'm ready for a nice sip of something. 
Oh, wow. That has an absolutely beautiful nose. That is just... Man. I mean, that is just pure caramel creme brulee candy. It reminds me... Um, it reminds me a little bit of the Woodford Reserve Double Oaked a little bit. It's got a really nice uh, oak char, but it's really, really sweet. We got some Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, Evan Williams Bottled and Bond from Bourbon Apprentice, Wild Turkey 101 for Dustin Martin, Stag Junior Batch 10 from Nick Foles. Um, actually, I think I got a... Did I get a sample of that one? I thought I did somewhere. Um... This is really nice on the nose, guys. This this has a very nice sweet oak. This has a really beautiful balance of oak and um, and sweetness. Really beautiful bourbon nose here. Mm. All right. Let's go in for the first taste of the night. Cheers to you. Thanks for coming in. Happy Whiskey Wednesday, guys. Here we go. Oh, wow. Wow. I really like that. That's really good. This has such a great sweetness up front, the caramels, the vanillas. But it's it it's got a nice rye spice to it too. I don't know. I know they do use a traditional corn rye uh, mash bill, corn rye and malted barley mash bill, but there's a good amount of a, a spice kick in there. I really like that a lot. That's good. I'm going to go for another sip. Mm. Yeah, for a 90 proofer, that has a lot of flavor to it. It is so sweet. This is like a, it's, it does, it still reminds me a little bit of the Woodford Reserve, um, like a double oaked almost. It has a ton of flavor. It's in perfect balance. It's got a lot of caramel. It's got chocolate in there too that I'm finding now in the back of the palate. Man, that creme brulee up front, chocolate, little caramel drizzle. I know I'm getting desserty again, but I can't help it. <laughs> whiskey friend, uh, he's he's got St. Cloud Batch 1 for me tonight. Oh, very nice, Whiskey friend. I love that stuff. Uh, Tab A Key, this is 90 proof. Uh, 90 proof, um, handmade in Washington State. So, yeah, and I did my research. They do everything um, They do everything on their own. They don't source. They, they grow all their grains from local farms, get it, mash it, uh, distill it, age it on site. Um, like I said, their barrels are toasted and then heavily charred, which kind of gives that really nice, um, that really nice flavor profile to it. Almost like a, uh, if you've ever had like a Michter's bourbon too, it's very similar to that. Um, really good stuff. Mm. Yeah, I could, I could sip on that. Um, I mean, this isn't, if you're looking for something more, uh, like barrel proof and something, uh, I don't know if this would generally i know they do have a barrel proof version that's available at the distillery i would love to try that based off of this but this is for 90 proof whiskey you know from a fairly new distillery i mean that's really good stuff that's really good uh if any of you guys have this near you i highly recommend uh either picking it up or trying it i think you'll really like it if you're into like a, a michter's or a even like a, a woodford reserve type flavor profile really good yeah, it's really good, guys. Definitely check it out. All right, so before we move on, uh, I do want to uh, take this time to support my patrons uh, that I've gotten a few new patrons uh, just this last couple weeks. So I want to give a shout out to Nandini Roy, Ben Lagarde, Justin Whitfield, Scott Ayer, uh, Ayers, Jeff Perkins, um, Stellar Matrix, who's in the chat. She recently became a uh, patron as well. Dwayne Large, thank you guys so much. I appreciate the support. Um, and, uh, yeah, can't wait to, uh, connect with you guys more. I'm sending out my next batch of shirts, uh, on my Patreon page. I just put in my, um, uh, my new shirt design that I'm working on. So, um, I had some people kind of give me some feedback on it. So I really can't wait to get those out. I think I got the final design. I'm going to be printing them soon. Uh, hopefully it'll be available, uh, probably a couple weeks. So. Um, Oak and Smoke Whiskey Reviews, talked with Ray Walker a few days ago. Jason, a batch two of the St. Cloud is coming out at the end of the year. Oh, very cool. Oak and Smoke Whiskey Reviews, are they are they still doing French Oak? Are they doing something completely different? 
Uh, let me know what they're doing. If you could talk about it. Oh, man. Oh, that's so good. All right. Dude, the Woodenville. That's legit stuff. Um, all right, here we go. We have a hey, whiskey in the six with a super chat uh, comes in with a six ninety nine super chat. He says, can't wait to see Jason's top 10 try before you die. Um, so, guys, I don't know if you if any of you have caught uh, that video that with Rob from whiskey in the six did. He uh, picked out 10 whiskeys to try before you die and a bunch of other channels are going to be doing it as well. So um, I said that I would try to do one. Uh, so I'm going to be working on that video. So can't wait to do that. So keep an eye out for that, guys. Uh, let's see. Oh, we just got another super chat. Keith Daniel, four ninety nine. I got to give two two uh, two symbol crashes here. Thank you so much, Keith Daniel. Very uh, generous of you. Really appreciate it. Thanks, man. Um, Eric Waite said he just got a major sponsor. Vagisil. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, Eric. Congrats, Eric. I really, uh, I'm happy for you. I hope that works out for you. Good job, man. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, all right, guys, we're going to get into the news real quick here. And um, let me just set this up here first. Oh, oh never mind. All right, so time for the whiskey news. As I always like to do that segment, get out your wallets, um, get out your, uh, your 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 prayers for some of these hard to find bottles. We have a couple of hard ones in here. Um, oh, we just got Tab A Key just came in with a uh, with a super chat four ninety nine. He says jump in early with it. All right, buddy, here you go. Thank you so much, Tab A Key. I really appreciate it. All right, um, all right, so. It is time for the whiskey news. All right, so a couple of really cool bottles to to talk about, uh, guys, tonight. Some of them we've talked about a little bit uh, already, but I uh, want to go a little bit into some more detail and also a little bit of some pricing that I've seen uh, off of some of the announcements here. So um, our first one is the new Little Book. So we talked about this a little bit a couple weeks ago. Jim Beam debuts Little Book Chapter 3 called The Road Home. So it's going to have kind of this brown green tag. Um, the first bottle had a black tag. Second one had a blue tag. So this was um, two years ago. Uh, debuted the first whiskey uh, by uh, Jim Beam for the, well, the first little book. A blended American whiskey made up of 13-year-old corn whiskey and four-year-old bourbon. A little book, chapter three, The Road Home. Freddie No blended each of the Jim Beam small batch collection whiskeys. So this is Knob Creek, Baker's, Basil Hayden, and Booker's. Notably, the versions used in the blend are actually older and higher proof than the bourbons available under the labels in the stores. The Road Home is bottled at 61.3% ABV. And thankfully, again, this has a price hike now. This is going to be available for about $125. So a little bit more of a price jump on, on this new bottle, guys. Um, it does kind of intrigue me. Especially, you know, having a Basil Hayden barrel proof in there. The stuff is a little bit older. I have a feeling that if you, I mean, if you're a, a Jim Beam fan, you, you know, and I am, a lot of us are, um, I think this is something you'll probably want to watch out for, or at least try. Um, should be a pretty cool one. Uh, next story up. Uh, if you guys are into Irish whiskey, we have Rider's Tears. They are announcing a cast strength version, uh, their 2019 release. This is the ninth annual limited edition cast strength release from the Irish whiskey brand. It is made from triple distilled, single pot still, and single malt whiskey aged in former ex-bourbon barrels. Now, the uh, whiskey is non-chill filtered, bottled at 53% ABV. That sounds awesome. Only 3,780 individually numbered and signed bottles are set to release. Out of those, 1,200 bottles are headed to the United States, while the remaining 2,580 will be spread across Ireland, the UK, Canada, France, the Netherlands, and select travel retail outlets. Um, this will be a price at a suggested retail of one hundred and forty-four dollars uh, U.S. So, um, I, I I happen to think that Irish whiskey is probably one of the fastest growing whiskey markets uh, that you're that you're seeing today, just because of um, 
I think people that are getting newer into whiskey, uh, from from my experience, uh, I think people are kind of gearing towards Irish whiskey first and foremost. It's a little bit smoother. Um, you know, it's triple distilled usually. Uh, so, you know, it's got kind of a smoother flavor. It's sweet. So I, I, I've come to and you're seeing this boom of all these different types of Irish whiskeys coming out and hitting the market, too. They're trying different stuff experimentally with rum, with different finishing, uh, French oak. And I think it's it's kind of an exciting trend we're going to see. So so uh, one that I just picked up the other night was Teeling which is a rum finish, which I love. Also the Teeling single grain, one of my favorites to go along with red breasts and what they do. So I, I really do. I am enjoying some Irish whiskeys uh, lately. Um, yeah. Fat trumpet. Good point. The regular bottle is 30 bucks. Um, but being this is so exclusive and it's also cash strength. Um, it's a limited bottling. You know, they're going to up that price. Um, hey, Joseph Frazo just showed up. Um, how you doing, man? I just actually, Joseph, I just poured some of the beautiful Woodenville that you sent, and I absolutely love it. This is a damn good bottle of bourbon. Um, love the flavor. I was saying in the chat or, or saying live that it reminded me a little bit of a Michter's or a uh, or a Woodford Reserve kind of a double oak that has that type of really great balance, but a better finish than the uh, than the um, than both of them. I think it has a nice kind of a rye finish on the end. Really like it. Uh, let's see. Aussie whiskey guys here. Good mid morning from Australia, man. Cheers to you coming all the way from Australia. Thanks for coming in, man. Nice. All right, let's go to the next story guys. And this is one that I'm very excited for. The Michter's release their U S one toasted barrel sour mash. So if you guys are a fan of the uh, the sour mash uh, rye um, that they that they release, which is one of my favorites, this is their sour mash whiskey. Um, they don't disclose the mash bill of this one, but it's the same one used uh, to produce the new Michter's uh, toasted barrel sour mash. This whiskey does not have corn in the mash, um, does not have enough corn in the mash bill to be a bourbon, nor does it have enough rye to be a rye whiskey. So it's somewhere in the middle for both of them. Uh, to create this whiskey, Michter starts with fully matured sour mash whiskey, then transferred it into a toasted, non-charred barrel for additional aging. Uh, aging, I'm sorry. The toast pro uh, the toast profile used to finish the toasted barrel sour mash uh, differs from both the toast profile used for the bourbon and the toast profile used for the barrel strength rye," said uh, Master of Maturation Andrea Wilson. Um, this is bottled at 43% ABV and has a suggested price of about $60. So expected to start hitting shelves in limited quantities next month in September. So um, I'm pretty uh, pretty excited for that one, guys. Uh, I love a lot of stuff that Michter's does, um, especially their toasted barrel stuff. It's always has a very unique flavor quality, really good flavor profile. Really love it. Um, uh, let me see here in the chat. What are you guys saying? Uh, Peter White said, still waiting to crack my Teeling 21 Silver Reserve. Oh, that plus that stuff must be awesome. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to the uh, to the toasted sour mash. I think it's going to be really good. Um, I'm gonna hopefully I'm actually going to be in Louisville in September at some point. I'm hoping it's at the distillery and I get lucky. We'll see. Uh, all right, only if two more stories left, guys. This is for all you Whistle Pig fans out there. It's the Whistle Pig 18 Double Malt. Um, this gets its name after the two malted grains used to craft it: malted rye and malted barley. This rye whiskey is the oldest that Whistle Pig has released to date. It has a mash bill of 79% rye, 15% malted rye, and 6% malted barley. Now, the whiskey is hand bottled at 46% ABV in a glass decanter at Whistle Pig's Barn in Vermont. Each glass bottle stopper is unique, and as they are pressed by hand on one of the last 19th century glass pressing machines in existence. Kind of fancy. Uh, this one will be released uh, in limited quantities uh, every year now. This is going to be a, a standard release every year. Suggested price, ugh, 400 bucks. Wow, $400 for that? I don't know. I just haven't. I'm going to pour some more of this Woodenville because I'm loving it. Um, I don't know, man. I just haven't had a whistle pig that's worthy of that type of a price point. Um, I've had some 10-year picks of the whistle pig rye that's been really good but not the i don't know some of the other more expensive stuff just i don't know it just doesn't do it for me 
Um, I don't know. What do you guys think about the uh, the whistle pig stuff? Hey, we got pal Joey in the house. How you doing, guys? What's up? What's up, pal Joey? We have a hard pass from Dusty Dan Whiskey Review. <laughs> I think it's interesting that they uh, put on the release that the uh, the glass bottle stopper is unique because they're pressed by hand on one of the last 19th century glass pressing machines. I mean, that's a really cool feature, but it's not like you're there to like witness it and like be in awe of it. I don't know. Um, Whiskey Crusader says he was guessing 700. So 400 is better than 500 for the Boss Hog. Yeah, I guess so. Hey, the Bourbon Road is here. What is up, Jim Shannon? How you doing? Uh, guys, I know I've mentioned before, if you haven't seen the Bourbon Road or listened to their podcast, definitely go check it out now. Scotch Test Dummies is in the house. What's up, Scotty? Thanks for coming in. Man, we got a nice full house tonight. What is up, Scott? Um, all right, guys, and last story of the night. The uh, This is going to be the Unicorn. Probably one of the more uh, soft that sought after uh, releases we have, guys. And that is this one. The Elmer T. Lee 100-year tribute bottle. Uh, this is, you know, Elmer T. Lee, eight, 1984. Pretty much introduced the world to Blanton single barrel. Uh, and, you know, he's kind of had a legendary following ever since. So this uh, this tribute single barrel bourbon is still a single barrel. It uses the same mash bill and age as the standard Elmer T. Lee. The difference, however, is that the bourbon is bottled at 100 proof. Rather than the standard 90 proof uh, that the regular Elmer T. Lee is. Um, for, go, for those of you who don't know, Elmer T. Lee served as a radar bombardier on B-29 flights with the Air Force during World War II. Um, after the war, he joined the Frankfurt VFW Post 4075 where he remained a member until his death in 2013. Um, distribution, as you would think, would be extremely limited Expected to begin late this month in August. While the suggested price is 100 bottles will certainly go for a bit more. So, um, so uh, that's the news, guys. That is that's everything. I mean, I hate to uh, you know be like, oh, I must have that bottle. Uh, you know, I, I do kind of want it. There's a part of me that really does want it. I just know I'll probably never see it. Maybe if I'm lucky, we'll see. But Scotch Test Dummies coming in with a $10 super chat. Here we go, Scotty. Woo, that's for you, buddy. I'm going to give a little uh, little cheers to you guys. Thanks for all the super chats tonight. So, guys, keep them coming. Love it. Uh, thank you so much for the support. We're going to test it. That was my Bart impression. <laughs> um, DJ Beacon says a bit more like $110. Uh, no, DJ. Probably more like... I guarantee you when that stuff starts popping up on the secondary, people will price it. I'm thinking four to five hundred bucks for that. No joke. I think it's gonna be that high. Um, but we'll see. Alright, guys, so um all right, what's next? Uh what am I gonna do here? Uh let me get my bearings. What's next? Uh all right, so I want to try um another new bourbon that I got. Well, it's not a I don't know if it's a bourbon, actually. It's a uh it's, it's one that I've never tried. It's the Corsair Outrage. Uh, this is a uh, distillery out of Nashville. This uh, sample comes um, uh, comes from Whiskey Shenanigans, or Mike, if you know him. He's usually in the chat. Um, I'm going to... <laughs> ADHD Fisher said, well, that was a damn good Bart. <laughs> uh, so this is... Uh, so. Corsair is a really cool craft distillery out of um, out of Tennessee. They do a lot of crazy stuff. They they do a smoked one. Um, they do some really good stuff. So this is the oat rage, which is made with uh, with literally oats and oatmeal and the well not oatmeal but oats. And the last time I had an oat bourbon uh, or an oat whiskey, I hated it. But I hear good things about this one. So uh, so let's give this one a try here. Um, let's open this one here. Yeah, this is one that uh, I've been wanting to try for a little while. Every time I'm in uh, Tennessee, I do see it. And it's kind of one of those that um, I hear very mixed reviews about it. But I wanted to get my own thoughts on it because the Woodford Reserve Oat Rage or the Woodford Reserve Oat Bourbon that I had, I did not like at all. Um, that was one of those ones, one of those bottles that I wish I didn't buy. 
I wish I had tasted it before I bought it, but, you know. Um, Joseph Brazo coming in with a $5 super chat. Glad you like the local bourbon. Yes, Joseph. Woodenville, it's good stuff. <laughs> Joseph, if there's any barrel proof uh, of this left anywhere, let me know because I would be highly interested in trying the barrel proof version of this stuff. Um... Whis Whiskey Crusaders, yeah, it's the it's the oh it's the Woodford one that I just do not like. It just did not it did not jive jive with me. Uh, Scott Chess Dummy says love the Rye Mageddon. Yes, the Rye Mageddon's really good, and I also like the uh, the smoked one, the uh, the smoked bourbon, which has like kind of a PD campfire smoke aspect to it. I didn't like it at first, but now that my palate's acclimated a little bit to peated whiskey um, or peated Scotch, I actually really enjoy it now. So. All right, let's get into the uh, to the oat rage here. Oh, this has a really unique nose to it, and unique I don't mean bad. Some people say unique meaning it's kind of a cover up word for bad. This does not mean bad. <laughs> it's got like a like a. It almost reminds me of a Colorado type bourbon style. It's got like a root beer type aspect to it. It, uh, it smells like it's going to be very, like, creamy. It just smells very, like, viscous on the nose. A lot of flavor coming through. Scotch Testum. Yeah, that's it. Corsair Triple Smoke. Yeah, that's the one. Whiskey Crusader says, The Woodford Oat is one of the worst whiskeys ever, but Koval Oat is amazing. Oh, I haven't had the Koval yet, but I always hear good things about Koval. This one smells way better on the nose than the, than the Woodford from what I remember. Um, this has a lot of like a, yeah, this one smells like root beer on the nose. It's really good on the nose. It's got some caramels in there. Definitely some sweetness coming through, like a vanilla icing. Let that open up a little bit. Steven Sussman says, I don't know, cherry smoked barley was worse. Yes, the cherry smoked barley one was pretty, was not really that great either. Um, the last two, the batch proof that Woodford makes is always really good. I love the batch proofs. Um, and the, um, what was the other one? The American Oak that they released uh, recently was actually pretty good too. Eric Waite, uh, root beer, does it have high rye? Um I don't know. I have to. I have to see if I can. Let me see if I can look up the mash bill for this one. Um, let's see here. Uh, Corsair Oat Rage. All right. So let's see if it has here on here. So uh, Copper Stills, uh, which actually kind of. Explains the the uh, the kind of bite that I'm getting on the nose, which is really good. Um, so this is made with uh, with malted oats and coffee malts to pr to create a si uh, silky flavor with dark finish. That makes a lot of sense because it does have a little bit of a coffee note on here too. Really nice. Um, see if I can get the. All right. All right, let's go for a taste of this stuff, guys. Cheers. Oh, my God. That is all coffee. That is just coffee. It tastes like coffee with cream. Honestly. It smells a little root beery and coffee on the, on, on the nose. But when you taste it, it is, it's Karen B. Ford. Are you still in the chat? Because if you are, then... Um, She's, she lives in Tennessee. Anyone else in Tennessee that's had this stuff, uh, let me know if that's what you taste on here. I mean, there is coffee malt in here, but the coffee on here is, like, really strong. And as soon as this hits the palate, and it's from that, that oat, that um, using those, uh, those oats and also the copper, uh, the copper stills. Um, as soon as it hits your palate, it just starts tingling. It's almost like it's effervescent. It just kind of dances on your palate. And then when you finish it out, it's just coffee and chocolate. And that is, that's probably, that's a dessert whiskey right there. That's a really nice dessert whiskey. 
that would not be like a regular sipper for me. It's just so sweet. But if you like coffee, chocolate, kind of a, a tingly finish there, man, it's still tingling on the front of my palate. That's really interesting. It, it's kind of hard to say. I think I really like it, but like I said, it wouldn't be something I would probably go to all the time. This is probably like a, like I said, it's probably a kind of a, um, like a dessert whiskey. Absolutely. Karen B4 said, yes, I've tasted it. Coffee strong, but wasn't off-putting to me. Really liked it. Yeah, I would agree, Karen. It's not like overly coffee. And I think the more sips you take, the coffee kind of goes away. And then you start getting some more traditional, um, some more traditional whiskey flavors. There's definitely some caramel in there. But there's a heavy chocolate note, too. Mm, awesome. Yeah, totally an after-dinner bourbon. Wow, I got 108 watching in the chat. Man, this is awesome, guys. Thank you so much for coming in. All right, so this is what we're going to do now, guys. We are going to go to, uh, we're going to do our two giveaways um, for the Wild Turkey Cornerstone. So if you guys watched my, uh, if you guys watched my review of the Cornerstone, I, um, I had called out on there that I wanted to give away uh, a sample of this, but we're going to give away two. Um, I feel like, you know what, let's just give away two. Um, I had 112 entries. And I, hopefully, if, it, if it's for anyone that doesn't have this and is really thinking about buying it, hopefully those samples will help you make a decision in that case. Because I've given this already. I've shared this with a few people. And um, so three people tried it. Two of them absolutely loved it. They were running out to get a bottle. And one person said, eh, I wouldn't pay the money for it. So I think tasting it would actually help. So, um, all right, here we go. So I have it set up so that um, I put all the names in the randomizer. Um, so I will show you guys that screen right here, and here we go. Here's the randomizer. So I have everyone's names on this list that came in. Like I, like I said, I had 112 um, all the way up to tonight leading um, before this live stream. So I'm going to call out or ask uh, Google here to pick a number between 1 and 112, and let's see whose name comes up. Hey Google, pick a number between 1 and 112. Oh, they picked a low number. It is 14. So number 14 goes to... Oh, and they're in the chat. Dark Meat Chicken. Dark Meat Chicken right there. You see it, buddy? You get the first sample. Congrats to Dark Meat Chicken. Awesome. Let me write that down. Dark meat chicken, you're going to get uh, the first sample of the night. All right. All right, here we go. Let's, give it, let's do this again. Pick a number between 1 and 112. Here's a random number, 3. 3. We're going with the, uh, with the low numbers tonight. Alex Julian. Alex Julian comes in and he wins this second sample. Everyone, congratulations to Dark Meat Chicken and to Alex Julian. You guys will win the two samples of, uh, of the Wild Turkey Cornerstone Rye. Congratulations, guys. Thanks for the support. Thanks for watching. And um, I, I hope you guys enjoyed the sample. So cheers and thanks, uh, thanks again. So I have the samples already here, guys, for you. All set. They're already poured, all ready for you. Dark Meat Chicken said, woo, with the mashing drum. <laughs> Congrats, buddy. Um, I didn't, Alex Julian is sometimes in the chat. I don't know if I see, I don't know if I saw him, but if he is, uh, congrats, man. I appreciate it. Um, all right. Trevor Wilson, my loose streak continues. <laughs> oh, Alex Julian is in the chat. Congrats, buddy. Thanks for coming in. Um, guys, uh, drop your, uh, drop your email in the chat, or if you're on Instagram or Twitter, you can contact me there and, uh, I'll, we'll work out how I can get these guys to you this week. So congrats again. So it is time to go to the star of the show guys tonight. Let's start with the King of Kentucky. So, uh, for those of guys, for those of you guys that don't know much about King of Kentucky, this is, um, uh, this is a pretty limited release, I think, from um, from Brown Foreman. I think it's only about a thousand bottles. Uh, let me see here. 
I took some notes here for it. So this is a straight bourbon from Brown Foreman, uh, about 15 years old. Mash pill, 79% corn, 11% rye, 10% malted barley. Um, it is priced at 250 bucks. Um, I've got some questions here. Andrew Spirell says, if you could buy one master's keep, which one would you buy? Hmm. It would probably either be the Decades or the Revival. I really, really love those two. My Revival's gone. I finished it real fast. Uh, I actually wasn't super impressed with it at first, but once that stuff opened up, it was amazing. Um, really liked it. Um, yeah, probably the Revival. And I, I'm a big fan of the Decades. I think once that... I just find this in all the Masters Keep. At first, um, they aren't that impressive when you first take a sip. Man, you get a little bit of air in that stuff. And all these different flavors open up in that, in, you know, in those. And, you know, that's really due to, you know, usually there's a lot older whiskey in there. It's really good. It's awesome, man. So I would probably say those are my two. Uh, dark meat chicken, pretty easy. Oh, dark meat chicken at AOL.com. Nice. Easy to remember. <laughs> dark meat chicken coming in with a $5 super chat. I finally won something. Yes. Congrats, buddy. <laughs> There you go, man. Dark Meat Chicken, you're usually in the chat, uh, so I'm really glad that that you won, man. It's always good to uh, to have people that are, you know, regular viewers win some of these. Um, all right. Uh, all right, so this release uh, for the King of Kentucky, this is derived from 27 single barrels with an average yield of only 30% per barrel. Um, the range comes between 125 and 135. Brown Foreman estimates this year's release to be 2,100 bottles, which is about 1,140 more bottles than last year's inaugural release. Um, so, all right. So that's about it. Uh, I have to thank D.H. Silv, uh, Dustin, for these samples. Um, he was the one that gave me them. I actually, he's crazy, man. He bought two bottles of these because he loved it so much. Um, so I have a bottle that came in at 130.8 proof here. Um, so that's one barrel. And then this one came in at 127.2. So, I mean, they're fairly close, but being a single barrel, we'll see if there's some differences and overall, if they are really worth, you know, 250 bucks, which most people would probably say no whiskey is worth that much, but considering the age on here and, um, uh, I know they, they do some temp, they do some crazy things with the temperature to control it and actually kind of. I don't want to say rapid age it, but I think they're they do some different things with the temperature in those warehouses to kind of make it make it taste and feel a little bit older than actually it is at, even at 15 years old. So let's pour a little bit of both of these guys. All right, that's a nice pour of that. This stuff is dark. I mean, really dark. Hey, the Linux cats in the house. How you doing? 112 in the chat. What is up, guys? Scotch says, dummy says, I'll take one of those. <laughs> you know what, Scotty? I'll try to save these for the trip to Texas. I'll bring these so you could try them. <laughs> uh, all right. So um, the first one we're going to try, this one is 127.2. So let's get into the nose on this one. Holy crap. That one just, what a nose on that. Obviously, with the age and the and the type of uh, aging process they use, this has a ton of oak already on the nose. I gotta let that open up a little bit. I get some air in there. Hey, DJ One One's in the house. How you doing, man? Man, that is just all oak and cinnamon so far on the uh, right, right off the right off the bat on the nose. Whew, there's some proof there. You could smell the proof. There's a lot of alcohol coming through here. Come on, open up a little bit here. This has a lot of um, sweet oak, like a seasoned oak, leather, tobacco. I mean, this you could you could smell the age on this stuff. It's really um, it's really strong. All right, so now some fruit flavors are starting to come in. I get a little bit of a of a peach flavor, which is kind of surprising, giving the uh, the age and the leather characteristic. Mm. 
Man, this is a ton of cherry, cinnamon, chocolate. My goodness. These are, these are like those fiery cinnamon red hots, but if you covered them in, like, if you uh, took a cinnamon red hot and, like, dip it in chocolate, that's what you smell in the nose. That strong oak and alcohol flavor is kind of going away a little bit. But for a, for a highly aged whiskey, this is something I think you would expect on the nose. It doesn't smell bitter. It does have a, a nice nose to it. It doesn't have, like, that off-putting kind of bitter oak smell that sometimes overly aged whiskeys get. I get that sometimes on the rhetorics, uh, which always piss me off, but Oh, thanks, DJ11. Joseph Brazo said I had the first king of Kentucky and it was really, really meh. <laughs> on the nose so far, this is really uh this is really nice on the nose. I would expect this on the nose from uh, uh, a bourbon that's this old and has this much proof to it. All right. Moment of truth. Let's go to the palate. See what we get here, guys. Cheers. Hmm. Still get that cherry chocolate flavor. So when I took a sip, I just let it sit on my tongue. And I actually think this is a really good technique to use, guys. When you first take a sip, just kind of let it sit on your tongue there and just let it kind of coat your tongue and see what it does. If you get to that, that tingly, I always look for like a tingliness on the front of your, uh, right on the front of the tongue there to see what it does. And this definitely left a good impression on the front. But the finish though, this is one of those where the front of the palate was a little bit more impressive than the, than the back. Let me uh, go for another sip. Before that, Dusty Dan's Whiskey Reviews with a $5 super chat says, great live stream, buddy. Thanks so much, Dusty. Everybody, if you haven't yet, go check out Dusty Dan's live stream. He just, uh, I'm sorry, Dusty Dan's channel, uh, Dusty Dan's Whiskey Reviews. He just he just did a, uh, a Dusty uh, matchup between two old Wild Turkey bottles, Wild Turkey Rare Breeds. So it was actually a really cool matchup. Go check it out, guys. Okay. All right, so this this kind of keeps. So this is wow, this is surprising. It's only an eleven percent rye, but this has a um, this has a a kind of a mouth feel and a an experience like it's a higher rye bourbon. It's got a tingliness that goes from the front of the palate all the way to the back. It stays kind of peppery, which I really love in a bourbon. But the flavors in it, um, I'm just not like I'm. It's like I'm kind of like I'm wanting more. I'm not sure what I'm getting it yet. Cherries, definitely some like like honey uh, honey soaked cherries type aspect to it. Definitely some more chocolate. You're definitely getting that leather tobacco type note on the finish. It's dark. It's rich. Mm. I mean this. I mean it's good. I mean it's a good bourbon. I like it. I don't know if I would pay two fifty for it though. It is really good though. Um. I didn't have last year, so I'm, I'm not sure of the comparison. Uh, but you know, this one from what I can, this one has kind of everything you kind of look for. I like that tingliness in a bourbon. I like feeling that rye spice kind of all around your palate and on the finish. Um, if you're into chocolate, leather, tobacco, some of those those higher aged whiskey notes, it's not extremely sweet. It's very oaky, as you would uh, as you would think. Um, but if you kind of like that, it does have a good kind of flavor character to it. Um, but if you want kind of a more of a sweeter bourbon profile, then this one just kind of this one goes definitely kind of over that and gets into that oakier um, leather, tobacco, cinnamon, spice type characteristic to it. All right, so my fourth sip, yeah, kind of like what Joseph Brazo said, the first two or three sips on this, they were really good. The fourth sip I just had, eh, I would like that to be way more uh, of a consistent flavor profile if I'm paying that amount of money for it. I want that flavor and that finish to be every time, like the first sip. 
And I'm not sure I'm really getting that yet. Um, all right, let's go for the 130.8 proofs. This is a little bit higher. Um, all right. Get a sip of water here. Uh, Dark Meat Chicken says, Stag Junior Cherry-like or no? I would say no. Um, Stag Junior to me has a brighter, like a fresh cherry note. This is like cherries being soaked in some kind of like liqueur. It's, it's, um, uh, like almost like brandy, like a brandy cherry almost. It's, it's very, it's very like deep, dark and rich. Maybe like a Luxardo cherry or a Maraschino. It's very dark and rich. It's not that, it's not that type of, uh, like artificial or uh, medicinal cherry note you know, that you get sometimes. This is, this is more of a Luxardo type cherry flavor. Uh, Master Drum, regardless of price, do you like it better than the Woodenville? <laughs> um, I would say, yeah, I like it better than Woodenville, but that's probably just based on proof. Now, the Woodenville barrel proof actually, actually I think might give this a run for its money. Um, maybe trying that because the Woodenville has a really beautiful balance to it that I really like. It's got a perfect amount of sweet oak, um, uh, kind of that creme brulee type flavor to it. There's there's a little bit of cherry in there too. Chocolate. The Woodenville has a little bit of everything you're kind of looking for. This is just very oak heavy, very cherry, very chocolate. Um, I'm not getting a ton of like the quintessential caramel vanillas. I mean, it's there, but really that age is really kind of masking it. All right, so this is the uh, 130.8 proof. Um, let's go into this one, see what we get. Cheers. Oh, that one's better. That one's better than the 127.2 proof. So this bottle, wow, that's interesting. So this bottle um, is actually vastly different from this one. Um, this one, the 130.8 proof, you're getting some of the uh, the vanilla and caramel sweetness on the back end. It's not as cherry. Um, this one has a better balance to it, and it's a little bit of a higher proof. Man, that's interesting. Let's go for another sip. Mm. Yeah, that one's nice. I like that 130.8. That one has that tingliness up front. The uh the the it does have a little bit of that cherry spice, but once it works its way back, it gives way to like that. There is a leather tobacco still aspect to it in that in that sweet oak, but then you get a really nice sweetness on the finish of that one. That one's really good. Yeah, if I had to choose, I like the 130.8 over the 127. The 127 in this barrel just um oh ding, it just kind of I don't know, just kind of uh it doesn't finish the way I would like. It's too much there's almost too much of a of an oak and um kind of a leather tobacco influence. I want that sweetness. And the 130.8 brings it. D8 Silv says, yeah, the 130 is better, but it's been open about two weeks longer. So that makes sense. Maybe a little bit of air, some of those sweeter flavors open up in there. Um, I mean, it does It does taste like Brown Foreman. You got that. The, Brown Foreman to me has a very specific type of, uh, of an oak profile to it. I love it. Um, really, really good. Um, yeah, really like that a lot. So just for uh, just for giggles, I brought out the uh, one of my favorite products from Brown Foreman, the Old Forester 1920, just to do a quick comparison. Um, this, uh, as you guys know, this comes at 115 proof, um, but it's from Brown Foreman, easily accessible, one of the darlings of uh, my whiskey shelf because I love it so much. So I'm gonna do a quick comparison, see if there's some similarities here. All right, there is a good similarity here with the uh, with the Old Forester 1920. You do get some of those same oak notes. It's just not as deep and rich as the um, as the King of Kentucky. King of Kentucky has more leather tobacco, but if you're looking, but that oak note and the chocolate and the cherry can be found in the 1920. All right, 
I'm going to try it. Well, let me get a sip of water here because I don't want to kind of kill my palate. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, the nose is pretty similar. I mean, you could tell on the nose that the King of Kentucky is definitely older. Um, but the 1920, besides that harsh oak, um, the uh, that oak and that tobacco leather influence, uh, it's pretty similar. All right, let's go for a sip of the 1920. Mm. See, yeah, it goes to show you what how much more age can do to a bourbon. If you ever did these head to head, um, the King of Kentucky just has such a deep, richer oak uh, type flavor profile to it. But what's interesting is the the 130.8 proof that I called out that has some of a of a a sweeter finish that is very similar to what you get on the 1920 the only the real big difference though from the king of kentucky is the uh all the flavors you get up front you get this that deep dark rich luxardo cherry that cinnamon spice that kind of lingers on the tongue that just kind of dances um and then it finishes with the caramel vanilla where the 1920 you get a little bit of cherry you get some chocolate there but really the sweet finish is what kind of balances it out. So 1920 is about uh, what 75, 70 bucks, 65 bucks in some places. King of Kentucky 250. Um, I'd still be happy to enjoy the old farce for 1920, but um, if I was offered a uh, King of Kentucky bottle um, and actually found it one, I don't know if I would turn it down. But it would have to be this 138 proof bottle because it's pretty damn good. Uh, but still, it's still very expensive, but I'll, I'd be happy just sipping the 1920, you know, actually. But thank you so much, D8 Silve. I really, um, really appreciate you giving me these samples. It really is a delicious, really delicious bourbon. You know, it's a really exclusive type of release. Not many people get to try this. Uh, so to be able to try this stuff actually up front, you know, thank you so much. Um, there are some very, you know what? If I could say one thing about King of Kentucky... I like this over Pappy. Some of the Pappy samples I've had. If I could say one thing about King Kentucky, I definitely like this over Pappy Van Winkle. Um, I just like the richness of it, the type of flavor profile that's in it that I feel like you don't get uh, in in a Pappy Van Winkle. So um, if there's some semblance in the pricing of the King of Kentucky, you could get something like this for two fifty. Uh, and not pay, you know, thousands of dollars for a Pappy Van Winkle. And I actually think this is better. Michael Hassett. So what is your sweet spot for years aged? Um, uh, probably, I really like that 8 to 12 year range. I really do. I like that 8 to 12 year kind of range. I really think that's a sweet spot for bourbon. I think once you go over 12 years, you're starting to play with, you know, you, you know, I've had stuff that gets a little bit bitter. Some stuff draws more vanilla out of it, but I really like that 8 to 12 range. I think that's kind of a sweet spot for bourbon. Uh, no pun intended. <laughs> How do you whiskey? Thanks so much. $4.99. Great reviews. These are good notes for future hunting. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate it. And that's the point. I really wanted to uh, do this for you guys and kind of go through these. Um, cap and make it happen. Hard truths. <laughs> D.H. Sill says, I think it will be super polarizing just because of how much oak there is. I love the oak, but I can get those who don't value it. Yeah, that's the thing. To spend the type of money on a king in Kentucky, you have to like oaky bourbons. Because it is completely, that is the, um, that's really the overall kind of profile to it. But I could see as this open up, as this opens up, you get some sweet flavors in there. So, um, yeah, I, I could definitely appreciate that. Uh, James says, hey, fellow North Carolinians. <laughs> uh, DH Silva, no bourbon is worth a thousand bucks. I love when I hear better than Pappy. No more of that. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I think this is the type of bourbon or flavor profile I would want out of a Pappy. But for me, I just don't get it. So um, if there's any kind of semblance in the, like I said, in the price of the King of Kentucky, then that would be it. All right, guys, so it is 9.56. I don't think that cast strength's going live tonight, so we could we could stay on a little bit longer here. Uh, Dark Meat Chicken, I just paid $125 for a pour of W.L. Weller 2017, uh, and it will never do that again. $250 for a bottle is a deal compared to a pour for half the price. 
Um, yeah, William the Rueller um, pours are definitely, you know, a lot of money. Um, so, yeah, it's, I don't know. I happen to love William Lee Weller. I really think it's delicious. Uh, but yeah, for twenty, for one hundred twenty-five dollars a pour, there's a place in Nashville I went to that was doing pours for twenty-five bucks. So, uh, all right. So this is what we're gonna do, guys. Um, first, I'm gonna keep sipping this King of Kentucky. Yeah. See, as this opens up, more of the typical vanilla caramels, um, I think, come to the forefront. That's why you really got to give time for whiskey to open up before you can really, you know, give it a fair shot. But uh, DH still saying that the 138.8 uh, proof bottle has been open for a while, and I could see why I like it better. There's there's just more sweet flavors coming through. The 127.2 is just, I mean, so oaky, and you're not getting a lot of sweet flavors. All that cherry and the oak, and it's a lot. So we're going to sense a theme here, guys. Uh, I told you, I said I had a big announcement tonight, so... Um, Hopefully you can get this uh, from what I'm about to do here. So I have the 1920, which I just kind of whipped out here. So I'm going to pour a little bit of this. And I also have the um, the Old Forester uh, 1910. So this is one of my favorite blends in the world. And because I'm doing that, the announcement tonight is for... This. Blend to get in two. It's coming, guys. <laughs> it is time. Boom. Here comes the boom, guys. Get to blending. It's going to happen, guys. It's going down. Um, uh, the blend to get in two is something that I've uh, wanted to do since blend to get in one was uh, really popular. We had nine entries uh, last year. I'm thinking we're going to have a little bit more uh, this year. <laughs> Um, ADHD fishing is already in the lab as we speak. <laughs> uh, Christine Deems was the, was the winner last year with the super blend, the thieving vicar, um, which I, and I've said this before, I have had a few people come up to me in, um, in local stores and said that they did that blend on their own and they absolutely loved it. So your blend could be the next big thing. So, um. Christine Daisy is in the house. How are you doing, Christine? I don't think I saw you. Say hi to you. Thank you so much for coming in. Uh, DA itself said, I'll just send a sample of the link with 37. Nice. <laughs> that is breaking the rules, buddy. So if you guys didn't catch the rules on there, this is what we're going to do. So, um, so we're going to do two categories this year. We're going to do uh, a bourbon blend category or American whiskey. So you could do rye. You could do bourbon. Just an American whiskey category. Uh, and you could do a scotch, scotch category. Um, now if you blend Irish whiskey or a rye in there, um, I'll, we'll just call it whatever it, you know, the primary ingredients are. So if you have a bourbon mixed with a rye mixed with another bourbon, then we'll just call it American whiskey blend. But I figured to kind of keep it easier, we cut it. We, I, I was thinking I could have done 
a um, a rye blend category, a um, an Irish whiskey category. But I think so many people blend different things together. I just wanted to keep it down to two. So we're going to have a bourbon slash American whiskey category, whatever you guys want to do in that one. And then we're going to have a scotch category. So one entry per person. Now, if you if you do have a bourbon blend and you do have a scotch blend, you can enter both of those. Um but it has to be one entry per category. So that's that's the only really rule I have. Um, I just don't want it to get into, you know, that people are sending in three different blends and stuff. I want everybody with one blend to have a shot. Um, like I said, entries are due by September 7th. Um, by that time, when I, when I have them, uh, I'll start setting up live streams where I get to taste through all of them. Um, Trevor Wilson says, going to send in a sample of Jephthah to keep you on your toes. Anyone sends me a sample with Jeff the Creed in it is losing. I'm just telling you right now. <laughs> um, so, uh, so yeah. Uh, work on your blends, guys. Uh, if you need any contact information to send them in, uh, contact me on Instagram or Twitter. You see in the um, right here on the bottom of the screen. Uh, or if you have my email, if you want to reach out to me, uh, leave a comment in this video. Let me know how if you want to submit your blend. I will be tasting them all throughout uh, the rest of September. Probably depending on how many get, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I am really looking forward to blend again in two. Uh, like I said, we had nine entries last year, and that was my first time doing it. I'm thinking we're gonna have much more this year. I will announce the prizes as we get close. I have some cool things planned for the winners this year. So uh, yeah, that's coming. So if you guys like ADHD fishing are in the lab and you're working on blends. Then get to work, guys, because it is coming soon. So get to work. Whiskey Crusaders, uh, what is the rule on how many you could put in? One per category, like I said. So um, if you could do uh, one one scotch blend and one uh, just bourbon whiskey blend. Um, so Karen B4 says, put the Jephthah in a family blind and watch for the faces. <laughs> you guys, somebody's sending me freaking Jephthah. I know it. One of you guys, or White Walker. Moo76 says, Jephthah plus White Walker equals magic juice. Dude. <laughs> um, tab A key, please post the rules out soon. Yeah, I will I will add the rules to the, uh, to the description of this video after we're done here. I'll see what you have to, exactly what you have to do. Um, so all of you will have that in the description. You could always go back to this uh, particular live stream. And I'll also leave the rules on my Patreon page if any of you guys that are patrons uh, want to get in on it as well. Um, so Whiskey Crusaders. Oh, I mean, how many whiskeys can go into it? However many you want, man. You can do however many whiskeys you want. I already got my first entry. So the second place winner last year, which was Mike from Whiskey Crusaders, Already submitted his blend, and the list is about this long. He's just got boop, 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 boop. He's got a bunch of stuff already listed in there. So you can make it whatever you want. It just has to be, um, if it's a scotch blend, you, you got to have to kind of make it primarily scotch, and you have to kind of, um, you have to kind of let me know which one, uh, what category you're putting it in. You're putting in American whiskey, or you're putting in scotch blend. Um, Trevor Wilson says, my blend will consist of the worst whiskeys imaginable. Hey, if you guys want to put in some crazy, nasty stuff, then go for it. Maybe a bunch of nasty stuff and we'll actually make something good. You never know. So um, I'm, I'm expecting uh, Christine Daisy to come up with something good. She is the one to beat. That Thieving Vicar blend was delicious. It was so good. I'm, I'm trying to remember what was in it. I think it was um, Elijah Craig C918. Uh, I think it also was Weller 107 and I'm trying to think what else was in that one. Uh, I'm trying to think. Christine, refresh my memory what's in that one. James said Fireball and Seagram 7 and Aristocrat. <laughs> hey, if you guys want to lose, that's fine. If you just want to see me suffer, then I'm all for it. I am here for you. So... So this is the uh, the 1915 that I made out of the 1920 and the 1910. Oh, I love that blend. Someone could just send in that and they might win. <laughs> it's so good. 
Uh, Karen B. Ford, how is the live stream blend coming along? So I'm glad you asked that, Karen, because I have it right here. So this is the live stream blend, and I have been sipping on it. And this stuff has turned into such a delicious blend. There's so much going on. And D.H. Silve, who's in the chat, had a taste of this uh, last weekend. Um, he could attest to how good this is. D.H. Silve, you want to call out how good this blend is? It's awesome. Uh, oh, they're saying Larceny. So it's Larceny, Antique 107, and uh, and Elijah Craig Brow Proof C918. That was, was, that's the blend that Christine uh, did. And she's... She's smart because she knows how much I loved that Elijah Craig C918. So if you guys are in it to win it, you know what whiskeys and what bourbons I like. Um, if you just want to screw with me and put Jeff the Creed in it, then that's up to you. <laughs> if you want to see me suffer, then go for it. Um, D8 Silf said, yeah, it was good. So, yeah, it's a really good blend. Uh, that, that viewer blend is coming off awesome. Mm, 1915, so good. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I can give you guys a quick review of before we sign off here. Uh, anything else that I haven't opened that I have up here, or down here, I should say. Um, Woodenville. Uh, let's see. Oh, I have this sample here that I could do. Although it's a scotch, but I haven't had this yet, and I've been really excited to try this one. I have to clean my palate, though, for this one. We'll end the night with uh, with this sample. I'm going to need a good amount of water for this one. <clears throat> DH, so did you sample the Glen Scotia yet? No, I did not. Not yet. Yeah, so this blend I uh, I named Paradiddle. It's really, it came out so good. The longer it sits, the better it gets. I figured with a September 7th deadline for you guys, that would give you time to make your blends let it sit for 24, 48 hours, see how it comes together, um, and then start sending them in. I am really, really excited for uh, for Blend Again in 2. It's going to be awesome. Um, so the sample I have tonight, guys, is uh, the Glen Goyne. Uh, this is a scotch. The Glen, the Glen Goyne, uh, is it teaspoon, teaspoon Batch? I don't think that's what it's called. Isn't the teapot? I think it's the teapot batch. Yeah, Glen Going Teapot Dram, batch six. 59.3% ABV. Um, I have one more glass here that I haven't used, I think. Then I'm going to try this stuff. All right, right over here. Let me clean this out. Oh, I got to clean that one out good. That was the Corsair. That was like all coffee flavor. <laughs> Let me get that one out, guys. Fat Trumpet said, do you name all your blends after rudiments? Uh, <clears throat> I might, actually. That might be a trend. <laughs> a paradiddle is a drum rudiment, guys. So basically, uh, the drum rudiment for a, a paradiddle basically goes right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. So you basically, you practice that. And then if you get good at it, it kind of looks like this. So when you start doing your rudiments... That's uh, that's kind of what it sounds like, but it just kind of it's a good training method for your wrists when you're playing drums. So, ADHD finish says Glen Groin, musty on the nose. <laughs> Actually, that one still has a lot of coffee flavor in it. Where's one that's kind of empty here? All right, that one, that one's good. All right, let me do that one. Hey, the Rock Gut Review is in the house. How you doing, man? All right, now we're good. All right, so let's pour some Glen Goyne Teapot Dram. This is one of those scotches that I've heard about on various channels, including Scotch Test Dummies. Um, I think Whiskey Crusade, I think Matt, I think you've talked about this one. Um, uh, Jason Whiskey Wise uh, has talked about this. Really love it. I've been wanting to try this stuff, so I cannot wait to finally try this stuff. Oh, what the hell? I'm pouring the whole thing. <clears throat> Stellar Matrix, how you doing? All right, so here's the color, guys, of the uh, teapot dram. That is pretty dark for a uh, for a scotch, got to say. And for what I understand, Glen Goyne does not add any coloring to their uh, to their to their whiskey, so All 
Oh my goodness, on the nose, that is that is candied green apple and honey all day. Some citrus, some uh, citrus, some lemon. Emily Chambers, how you doing? Thanks for coming in, Emily. Which Corsair was coffee heavy? It was the Oat Rage. The Oat Rage uh, had some coffee malt in it, had a coffee and chocolate type of uh, finish to it. Next time I'm in uh, Tennessee, I'm definitely getting that stuff. That stuff's good. <clears throat> Whiskey Mix said, I already have some great ideas for the Neil, Neil Peart of bourbon blends. Going to have it all. <laughs> Love that, man. Awesome. Man, this this on the nose is really incredible. Uh, I probably I've only smelled a few uh, scotches that have had this robust of a of a nose profile. Uh, Whiskey Crusader says correct, no coloring, just really great barrels and slow distillation. That is one of the best I've ever had. Yeah, Glen Goyne, uh, they're kind of their signature is doing a very very meticulous and slow distillation to kind of get the most flavor out of it, and it shows on a lot of their scotches. The 15 and the 18 are kind of one of my favorites that I've had. But this teapot dram has such an intense apple and caramel flavor. I just can't get past it. It's so good. Some lemon, some spice, some allspice on there too. You definitely get that uh, that burnt toast, that burnt toast aspect to it. Mm, so good. All right. To the last round of the night, guys. Cheers. Thanks for uh, hanging out with me on this uh, Whiskey Wednesday. Oh, man. Wow, that is freaking good. Woo. I'm like looking off into space, like trying to think of what I'm getting here. That is so incredibly mouth-coating. Even on some older scotches, I don't know if I've ever had anything that mouth coating. It's like it's like syrup, and that caramel apple cinnamon type aspect to it just stays and it stays, and the finish just goes. Again, you leave this on the tip of the tongue, and it just kind of dances and it and it leaves a tingly uh, feeling to it. Really nice. Let's go for another sip. Oh damn. That's that's one of the best scotches I've tried. That's amazing. So much flavor. That's intense. Usually with a scotch, I'm used to either the finish or the front of the palate being kind of dominant. Um, this one is dominant the entire way through. Just so much flavor, so much um so much apple, honey, cinnamon, a maybe a little of a uh, of a hint of a um of a, there's like a brown butter aspect in there too. That is so good. Man, I wish that that was available, more readily available. Damn it. <laughs> mm. Take care, Karen. Thanks for coming in. Bye, one one. Wow. Who who in the chat has had this before? Because it's this is stellar stuff. Really good. I know Matt's had it. Damn. That is a delicious, delicious scotch. I could see why this is so coveted uh, from collectors and from scotch whiskey enthusiasts. That is, that's absolutely stellar. I love it. So good. Uh, how do you whiskey? I need to find you guys on the Instagram. You can always find me. How do you whiskey? I'll check you out. Great whiskey that isn't readily available. Never. <laughs> exactly. Uh, take care. How do you whiskey? Thanks for coming in and hanging out tonight. All right, guys. I think uh, that is a show. I had so much fun tonight with you guys. This was uh, We went through a lot of whiskey, talked about a lot of different things, news, whiskey. Thanks again to my patrons. Thanks to all of you that put in some super chats. Uh, always appreciate the, uh, the support, guys. Um, uh, as I mentioned, blend again in two, uh, as the announcement work on those blends guys, uh, get them in soon. If you have a blend, contact me on either Instagram or, uh, or Twitter, uh, or connect with me on a comment here. Look for the rules that I'm going to post. 
Um, the prizes I probably will announce in a couple weeks. It's going to be awesome prizes this year, guys. So really hope you guys get into it. Uh, thanks again so much for uh, hanging out with me on this Whiskey Wednesday night. Had an unbelievable time with you guys, as I always do. Uh, and like I always say, it is not about the whiskey. It's the people you share with. So cheers. Get some whiskey. Share it with a friend. Share it with a family member. Um, have a great weekend, and I will see you next time. Take care, everybody. Cheers.